Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 52. Please turn to it. And today is our lesson number 2. We began yesterday. On page 52, we see very simple, straightforward uh, subtraction problem, and that's all there are. Very, very first one it says on page 52, we have practice questions. The number 1 simply says 1000 minus 99. Now we don't have to solve every single problem in an academic way, even though it's a very simple thing and uh, there is no need to make a fuss about it. But there is a quicker way. We know 1000 minus 100 is 900. We're not supposed to subtract 100, we're supposed to subtract 99. So just add 1 to it, that's all. So first we subtract 100, we get 900, and then we add back 1, hence by subtracting 100 first and then adding 1, we are essentially subtracting 99. So now it's easier, it's 901. That's all. Next one. All they're trying to see here is that if you can concentrate, that's all it is. And that's what we're going to do here in the next one. 98,765. And we are asked to subtract, or rather, we are asked to subtract. We are asked to subtract. Ninety-eight thousand seven hundred and sixty-five from two hundred and fifty-seven thousand one hundred and forty-three. So we have to subtract this amount from that. So we have to write that first: two hundred and fifty-seven thousand one hundred and forty-three minus. 765. Now before you do any work at all, you have to have some gut feeling as to what the answer should be. So that if you do end up making some silly mistake and if you end up getting some insane answer, you should be able to tell right away that something has gone wrong. For example here, we have 257,000 approximately, 143 approximately 257,000, we are subtracting 98,765 which is approximately 100,000. So the answer, whatever it is, it's got to be around 57 some thousand dollars. Uh, 57 some thousand. Let's still do it out, shall we? And keep track of what's going on here. So we borrow one, we get 13, 13 minus 5 is 8. And as soon as we do that, that 4 becomes 3. That 4 became 3. 13 minus, well again we borrow one, 13 minus 6, 12 minus 6 is 6, so it's going to be 7. And this becomes 0 because we went borrow one. Now we borrow one, it becomes 10, 10 minus 7 is 3. As soon as we borrow 1, this becomes 6. We have to borrow 1 again to get subtract 8 here. When we borrow 1, it becomes 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. And as soon as we borrow 1, it becomes 4. Again, in order for us to subtract 9 from 4 from 9 from the 4, we have to borrow 1, becomes 14 minus 9 is 5. And this became 1. That's all. Just keep track of your work and it'll be fine. 157,378. Something of course has gone wrong drastically because I've just got done explaining to you. Oh, this is wrong. 257,000 minus 100,000 would give us approximately 157,000, which is what we're getting here. So this is not the wrong part. The wrong part is what we did the approximation there. Let's do the next one, number three. It says take. Four thousand six hundred and ninety away from seven thousand and eighty one. When they say take four thousand six hundred and ninety away from, but to take something away from something, same as subtracting. So the well, I shouldn't have written a subtract on top of that here, essentially. 
to take something away means to subtract. So we have to subtract that amount from that amount. So we have 7800 minus 4690. Again, if you want to do the approximation first very quickly, 7081 is approximately 7100. And 4690 is approximately 4700. 11 minus 4 is, 11 minus 7 is going to be 4, and 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. So it's going to be approximately 27, approximately 2400 is what we're looking for. That should be, our correct, our correct answer is going to be around that part, and that's what we should get. If we get something far away from that, then that should ring a bell. If we get something way under 2400 or way over 2400, something has gone wrong. Let's do it, shall we? So again, 1 minus 0 is 0. In order for us to subtract, 9 from the 8, we have to borrow 1, and in order for borrow 1 from here, this is 0, so we have to borrow from here, it becomes 10, and it becomes 9. I shouldn't have to explain all this to you, you know it, and it becomes 18, 18 minus 9 is 9, and 9 minus 6 is 3, and this became 6, 6 minus 4 is 2, there you go. So that's what we're looking for, we're looking for something around, that should have been 1, 1 minus 0 is 1. This is what they're looking for. It's not the math part. Of course, you know how to subtract, uh, obviously. They're just trying to see if you can concentrate, as, as I'm showing you here, as I'm giving you a great demonstration how not to do it, because I made several mistakes right now. 1 minus 0 is 1. That's all. Let's go on then. So if nothing else that you may take from these videos, one thing that you may take away from this video is to learn how not, how not to take the exam. Because as, I, as you saw, I made two or three careless errors just now. Don't do this. That's exactly what we're looking for. To slow down and take your time. But the material itself is quite straightforward. On the next page, page 53. Oh, for Christ's sake. Page 53. 2.5. We are told that we have a patient that needs... 100 milligram. Tablets, we are told, only come in 50 milligram each. Question simply is, how many to give? Oh, for Christ's sake, listen. If the tablets are 50 milligram each and he is hell bent on having 100 milligram then since tablets are only 50 milligrams and as I said he's, if he's hell bent on having 100 milligram let him pop too, that's all for Christ's sake, don't make a fuss about it okay, don't make a big freaking deal about it just let him pop too okay, the answer is let him pop too next one number 2.6 Nobody ever said popping pills is no fun. 2.6 A man wants to fence his garden. A man wants to fence his garden that is 25 feet by 30 feet. Fencing costs eleven dollars per foot. And the question simply is how much will it cost him to fence his garden? Well the very first thing we have to do here, the first thing we have to figure out here first we have to figure out what is known as the perimeter what is known as the perimeter and again the reason I'm writing everything down is uh, because I realize that it may have been few moons 
since you did the perimeter the last time. We don't do we don't go around doing this thing in our daily life, I understand that. So to remind you, the term is perimeter. Perimeter simply means perimeter simply means sum of all the sides. Sum of all the sides. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the picture looks like. The picture does not have to look like a, a very nice symmetric uh, civilized uh, rectangle or a square or, or anything like that. It could be anything. For example, for example, if I have something that's shaped like this, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the sum of all of these sides, you measure all of these sides and add them up, that's the perimeter of the thing. Here, here we have it should say a rectangular garden. They must use this term. Uh, a man wants to fence his garden to keep his children and dog. The garden is a rectangle. There you go. A man wants to fence. A garden that is 25 by 30 feet is a rectangle. It has to be, they have to mention that it's a rectangular garden. Otherwise, just by knowing that it's 25 by 30 feet, that's not enough. We can't. So it's a rectangle. There is a 25 feet, there is 25 feet, there is 30 feet, there is 30 feet. Because without knowing the word rectangle, all they have told us are the dimension of two sides. They have not told us the dimension of the other two sides. And we can't go around doing multiplication either. All they would have told us in that case is that he wants to fence a garden where the two sides are 25 feet and 30 feet. But we wouldn't know the shape of it and we couldn't uh, surmise this. The, the, the length of the other two sides. Since it is a rectangular garden, since we are told that it is a rectangular garden, so this is 25 feet, then that is 25 feet. Some of these two sides is 50 feet. If this is 30 feet, then this side is also 30 feet, and that's 60 feet. And the perimeter is 110 feet. The sum of all the sides equals 110 feet. Now we are told that it costs $11 per feet cost eleven dollars per feet so to figure out the cost of the entire fence we just have to multiply eleven by the perimeter the cost of the fence per foot by the number of feet in the perimeter so it's hundred and ten feet times eleven dollars per foot and the foot will cancel out. Let's continue I need the room now what I'm about to tell you is very important here, pay attention here. In this exam, as you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very intense exam, not because it's difficult, but because they do not give you too much time to solve these problems. You have to go at a fairly good speed. And in order to achieve that, there are some basic things in arithmetic that you must have at your fingertips. And one of them is that, one of them is that you must know, we must know, our squares. You must know our squares, which we'll do tomorrow. You must know your squares 1 through 20. 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, all the way up to 20. Here what you're looking at is 11 squared. 11 times 11. 11 times 11. If you knew your square, we would know that 11 squared is 121. And had we known that, we could have saved a couple of seconds because it's just is just 11, 1, 121 with a zero at the end. So the total cost is the total cost is going to be 121 with a zero at the end, 1210 dollars, 1210 dollars. So let's do the squares here, okay? We'll do a few of them today, and then we'll pick up tomorrow. You must know your squares. I'm not going to make too much fuss about the first 10, they are quite straightforward, 1 through 10. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, of course everybody knows these. 6 squared is 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. You must have these at your fingertips. You must have these at your fingertips. What we want to do right now is to go through the squares of 11 through 20, so pay attention. Okay. There we go. 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, and 15 squared. You must know these by heart. 
11 squared is 121 as we just learned. Then we have 140, 144, 166, 198, and 225. And 225. What? Something went wrong? You see something wrong here? What is wrong here? Let's find out, shall we? 11 squared is in fact 121. 12 squared you will find that is in fact 144. What about 13 squared? Well listen, I do not know what 13 squared is, but I will bet my life without a moment's hesitation that this answer is not correct. I don't know what 13 squared is, but 13 squared, whatever the hell it is, if you think about it, 13 times 13, whatever the hell it is, it must end in a 3 times 3. The unit digit must be 9. I don't know what 13 squared is, but whatever it is, the bloody thing must end in a 9. It cannot possibly end in a 6. 13 squared is 169. Similarly, I don't know what 14 squared is, but whatever the bloody thing is, if you think about it again one more time, 14 times 14, in the unit digit, what we will end up is 4 times 4, which is 16, it should end in a 6. 14 times 14, the unit digit must be 6. 198 is not right. It is 196. And 15 squared is correct. Let's move on then. 16 squared. Sixteen squared, seventeen squared, eighteen squared, nineteen squared, and twenty squared. Twenty is two fifty-six. Seventeen squared. You do not have to memorize it for the exam. There is one instance where you will need to know it. I'll come to that in a second. Eighteen squared. You do not need to know it. Nineteen squared. You do not need to know it by heart. Just understand that nineteen squared, whatever it is, must end in a one because nine times nine is eighty-one. The unit digit of 19 squared, whatever the hell it is, it must have a 1 at the end. If it does not have a 1, something has gone wrong. Similarly, 18 squared will end in a 4 because 8 eights are 64. And 17 squared, 7 times 7 is 49, it will end in a 9. But we don't need to know those by heart because they don't appear very often. 20 squares, you, we do need to know it. It's very simple. 20 times 20 is simply 2 times 2, which is 4, and then 2 zeros. 20 squared is 400. Tomorrow, what we will do, let me take a look at the time in the back, just give me one second. Tomorrow, what we will do is to learn how to approximate. There are three quantities that come in quite handy in the exam, and those three quantities are square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5. How to approximate these three quantities? And the approximation of knowing the approximation of these three quantities has to do with these squares. We'll pick up from here tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.